Howdy. So, I did this whole recording, and it came out sounding like this. Nice. All right, let's do this again. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do the traffic report. So you go to KBLR Video, Traffic Report, double click, and open up, and it opens up Motion. Uh, this is pretty much done in Motion. And we use Motion and a website called SigAlert.com. And here it is. Okay. Really and truly, the hardest part about this is you can see all these little diamonds. Those are incidents that happen all over Vegas. The hardest part about this is finding the six incidents that you want to want to use. So let's run through them real quick. Uh, road construction. You can see once I click on it, you can see over on the right side it says road construction US 95 between Ann Road. Blah blah blah. All right, so we've got road construction, road construction, accident, road construction, road construction, accident, accident construction accident oh interesting that's new <clears throat> and things will pop up here and there so oh here's one right there road construction construction accident I tend to focus a little bit on the accidents just because they're a little more sensational than um, than construction oh look NASCAR spring cup series it's clear out here no it's not NASCAR series is over here. Anyway, they're just showing that there's going to be traffic. All right, so we picked our six incidents, I believe. Well, let's let's go back and make sure. Um, I want this construction because it's slowed down a lot. One, two, three, four. Five, and we'll go with this construction here. Six. Okay. Let's go back over here, take a look. Actually, I'm not going to change any of these, but this is what I want to do. I want to show you the layout of all this, how it works. I like to make these a little smaller. Oh, I thought I deleted this. I guess I didn't. And I don't need that anymore. No, I'll leave that there. Okay. I have several groups here. Logos, guide, foreground, and background. Logos is where all of this stuff is. Okay? So I've got the Telemundo logo, El Tráfico en Las Vegas, the background box, and Chevron. Um, the Telemundo logo and the background box should be locked. They should stay that way. Uh, Chevron is here and it can be replaced by any logo and all you do is you drag the logo from your finder drop it right here it becomes a little arrow and it'll replace that and then you can resize it to however you want okay so that's that that group the guide just so you know is so that i can place everything so it's readable on every screen um, i know telemundo is starting to get away from this now they're starting to push out to the high definition screen safe rather than the center cut screen safe um, I'm still sticking to this for a little bit. I think I'm going to give it another year and then I'll let it go. All right, foreground. This consists of pretty much everything else um, except for this map. The background is the map and that's it. The foreground is all of this stuff and anything that I'm going to put over here on top of the map. Okay, let's dive into the foreground just a little bit more. I have text boxes. And all they are is the actual text on here. They're not, um, they're not the boxes. It's just the text. And then I have roads with signs, black boxes, and then I have this thing here that says roads. Roads and info. And then it's got all the signs inside of it. Now the signs are, you can see on some of these, this says US 515, I-15, I-15. So the way this works is you just turn on the signs that you want at those times or on those places. So this is position one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So on this one, it's US 515. Uh, that's the only one. Everything else is I-15. So I would fill them all out like that. And if I had um, 95 here on position 5, I would just find it there. I mean, 215 on position 5, I'd find it there, and that's it. Pretty simple. All right. Now for drawing. Let's just say I went ahead and filled all these out. And what you can do is you just double-click and start typing whatever it is you're going to type. And the way I have these laid out, or the way I'd like to have them laid out, is I have what the incident is, where it is, and how fast the traffic is going. And sometimes if there's some extra information, I can put it down here. But it's what happened, where it happened, how fast is everybody going. Some of them can get pretty slow. Like this one here, it was at 16 miles per hour. And how you can tell how fast it's going is on SigAlert. If you go to the incident, you can see around on the right side, you can see the, the speed. So this one, everyone's going around 28 miles per hour. This one here, people are going all the way down to 19 miles an hour in there. So I would put 19 miles per hour in that area. All right, let's go ahead and throw some signs on here just for kicks. And this is how we draw on it. Okay, this black boxes, these are the black rectangles here. Okay, how we do this, I can probably get rid of these. Um, how we do this is we click on the paintbrush tool and we find where the accident is or where the incident is and we just kind of paint around the area, usually following the roads. So this one is 515 and Eastern. Uh, the 515 is the 95, it's the same thing. It's this one here. It goes like this. 515 and Eastern will be around this area. Um, whoops. I just did two paint strokes. I-15 in Charleston. Um, the I-15 is this one here. And Charleston's about right here I15 in Sahara right there I15 in Spring Mountain oh my goodness it's just the I15 all the way to Russell and then some it's all right there and because the 215 is being affected we'll put that in there as well oops that wasn't very straight so if you have to undo something you just have to click back here on the paintbrush and you can do it again Wow, that looks like some of my Strava tracks. Okay, uh, let's just add some more for effect. Just all over the place, why not? Just for fun. Anyway, okay, here's what we do now. Now if we go down here and open up the roads group, you can see that all of these come here. Now what happens is everything will come on, and nobody will know what's going on until all of a sudden, boom, everything comes on. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the top and select, hold shift and select the bottom and then just drag these out until they match the end of the group. And they will be invisible until the group comes on. All right, so that's how we make them in black. But even though the black looks okay, it doesn't draw your, your attention as well as the red does. So I'm going to click on it. Well, here, let me show you how to do this. Um, I have them all selected. I come over to Inspector, Shape, Style, and then I go to Outline. And I don't want the fill on. I want just the outline on. And I click on the brush color, and I change it to whatever color I want. Now, just so you know, there's some transparency on here. And the reason of the transparency is if you click on the Roads group, and look at the inspector under properties, you'll see that my blending mode is multiplied. So that gives it kind of a transparency look and makes it interesting. All right, a little comment about red. <clears throat> Studies have shown that the eye is drawn to red first. That 
the eye sees the color red before it sees any other color. So if you're looking away and you look towards something and it's got a little bit of red on it, you're going to see that first. However, red is also one of the hardest colors to read. Even though you see it, it's difficult to decipher what it is. Okay? Um, in the case of this where I'm highlighting these roads, red is good because it signifies danger. It signifies problems or whatever um, or warnings and it's good because you're drawn to it and you can see it in this particular case it's okay because you don't have to define exactly where it is you can kind of see the area you don't have to define exactly what it is I should say but if you used it for titling and for typing and for lettering the eye will be drawn to it but it won't be able to read it not very well at least and so it's a very difficult thing to do I don't recommend using red for titling because of that fact especially on TV um, when we're using MPEG codecs to compress things uh, red tends to get destroyed and so when you use red for titling it tends to be difficult to read as you can see here with this little tiny Las Vegas you can't really read it it's difficult if it was bold, you might be able to read it just a little bit better, but um, it's difficult to read just for the fact that it's red. So when it comes to titling, honestly, my favorite color to use, my two favorite colors to use are white and yellow. White I use for normal titling, yellow I use for things that I want to draw my attention to because the second most noticed color is yellow your eye notices that second and the biggest difference with it is that your eye can actually see the yellow and decipher what it is okay so now what we're gonna do is now that we finished we're going to export this movie so we go file export and here we go I'm just gonna export it as a ProRes 422 no big deal and go to next and I'll call it whatever I want I usually put a date to it and I throw it in the spot transfers folder and it exports and it's rendering everything and putting it all together and what I like is these trash can Macs are actually very quick it used to take a long time to do that um, but now it's very quick I'm not going to save it and the reason I don't want to save it when I close it is because I don't want to have to erase all of these roads and I don't want to have to turn off all this stuff. So I don't save. Now the next part is I'm going to go into Final Cut Pro and I'm going to export this thing and convert it. And if I go over here to my spot transfers, I can grab this file and drop it here into my bin or into my event and I will copy it, paste. I'm going to copy and paste the name, not the element, just the name. And then just drop it in there. And this is what it looks like. Esto es la información del tráfico a la última hora. All right, not too bad. I think it's a little short, which is fine. Uh, no, it's fine. I think my music might just be off a little bit. Um, what I need to point out for this is the fact that on this particular item, I'm going to have um, a billboard and a spot, like a 10-second spot and a 5-second billboard that will be attached to this. And I think the way that they're going to do this, I don't know yet. Traffic hasn't made it clear yet. Um, but I think what they're going to do is put, um, they're going to put the spot, then the five second billboard, then the traffic report. Or it might be the five second billboard, then the spot, and then the traffic report. And when they do that, I will probably create a new, a new library with just this, just one event and a 
project in it and um, and just have that project so that we drop these items in here and we just come in and go replace from start just for that one item and just let it go and export it from there. Um, I haven't decided on that yet because I have not seen the elements yet, but that's kind of the plan that I'm leaning towards. All right, so you saw how to use SigAlert.com to find your traffic in your area, pick out the six things that you like, and use my little traffic report um, uh, template so that you can build the traffic report. It's a pretty simple, easy task. It is a bit tedious, and um, honestly, the hardest part is typing in all the information. Um, but that's all I have to say about it. Uh, enjoy doing this every day. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And again, if you have any, uh, any questions about any of the elements, because I didn't show you how these elements worked. I just showed you how I had everything laid out and what to do to change them. Um, but if you have anything that you would like to ask or any questions about how it works, let me know and send me a message and you can send me a message through YouTube or post a comment, whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you very much for watching.